Here are some of the main reasons and stories we get behind why people mainly want to leave areas like California and choose places to live like Kentucky. Many of you guys call us weekly at this point, and we cannot tell you, first of all, how grateful we are, but second of all, how amazing it is to listen to your stories and hear where you're coming from, you know, all the way across the country even, or across the globe sometimes, but uprooting your family, wanting to take on this endeavor of moving from, you know, state A to state B, all the stories we hear about how you're going to get through this endeavor. What's so amazing to us is that we can relate. We've been there. And so it's really neat to just hear your stories about where you're coming from and being here to be able to help you guys. The number one reason being money. The cost of living, as we know, out there on the West Coast is extremely high. And the stories we hear all the time, literally calls we take from you guys weekly on the phone is we cannot afford our dream home out here. Plain and simple. We have a dream about this kind of life we want to live and it's just not possible in places like LA. The second reason is safety. You guys call us and tell us all the time. There's high crime in certain areas nowadays, more so than there was, you know, years ago. Um, you can't even feel safe sending your kids to certain schools. You can't feel safe in certain shopping areas anymore, public parks, or even on the streets. So that's not good um but the stories you guys tell us it i mean people coming from oregon washington california it doesn't sound good so that's one of the main reasons people want to leave number three being the homeless population and look i get it we have homeless here too in kentucky and it's just it's just part of everywhere you go anymore number four is too many people Number five is too much traffic. Number six is too much noise. And number seven is no community and family feel anymore. And that to me is really sad because we actually have that here. And so I can't imagine what that's like. Um, I mean, maybe in a big city where it's just, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, I can understand where you'd kind of feel lost in a shuffle. I don't know, I can't speak for everyone. Some people love city life. Um, but the calls that we get are from, you know, people who live in, you know, regular American towns where they still say they feel like there's just no sense of community. And well, we have that here. So a lot of people are choosing these regions to seek that out and get that back in their life. And number eight is political tension. Too much overreach. <laughs> And hey, I mean, we could get into it. I don't really want to, but I can see where, you know, a lot of things going on on the west side of the United States uh, just don't sound very appealing to me either. So <laughs> I can see why all of these reasons are reasons why people don't wanna be there anymore. So what are the reasons why people are calling saying they don't want that kind of lifestyle anymore? What, what is it that they're looking for? And the calls that we get are people asking for it. They simply want a slower pace of lifestyle, something quiet, something simple, something relatable, connected. Maybe they want to start a homestead. They want to grow a garden. They want a little more space. They want some greenery. They want space from the neighbors. And all these things, we must, here in Kentucky, we must be taking them for granted because those are all the things we have here. I mean, every day, year after year, Kentucky continues to allow people to live these kind of lifestyles on a regular basis. I've experienced it myself for the last 23 years of my life. And Jarrett and I just had this conversation the other day because we, again, you know, we listen to your stories and, and, and the things that you're asking for is like, this is what we live every day here. And so it must be really appealing. And I can see why you would want those things if you didn't have them in your life. Cause I, I honestly wouldn't want to live without some of the things that we experience here on this side of the country in places like Kentucky and Tennessee. We simply have all of the things that Californians are saying they lack. Lower, affordable cost of living being the most desirable. So if you're wondering what kind of lifestyles you might get to experience and live here in Kentucky, 
You might want to check out my video I did on the types of lifestyles um, that everyday Kentuckians live. I mean, you can live an urban lifestyle if you choose one of the bigger cities, or yeah, you can purchase 19 acres and, you know, have a horse farm, or you can live the lake life, you know, get a boat and live on the lake, or just simply live in a small suburban area where you do get that community feeling. You know, maybe you're on half an acre or something and you can have a couple chickens. Like, that's totally doable here. Another video Jarrett's planning on doing real soon here, so subscribe and stay tuned, is how much outdoor space you can get here in Kentucky. So Kentucky is not perfect. It's not Mayberry, although, Coming from some of the stories we're hearing from California, it might sound like it is. When some of our new clients get here, I mean, they're amazed and it's really fun to watch. You know, the looks on their faces as they're touring around and, you know, they're taking in all the greenery and the scenery and, and they just seem so happy to, to see it all. And, and that's really amazing and kind of touching to us because we're like, what is it that's so different that y'all are coming from that this is so um, exciting to experience? It's, it's really interesting. So clearly Kentucky's not perfect. In previous videos, we've talked about how much it rains here and because it's so green, that's why, because we get a ton of rain. I mean, 45, 50 inches a year, I can't tell you. I'm wearing a white shirt today that probably blends in with my skin so well and it's the end of May and I should have already had a suntan by this point in the year, but this particular May, we have had so much rain, we haven't been able to get some vitamin D yet. I mean, it's been hit and miss and you know, the rain gets tiring, it really does. But when that sun comes out, this is one of the most beautiful states. Now we've got bugs and humidity, and so there's things about the climate that aren't perfect. But what we do have is that small town feel where on a Sunday, most local businesses are closed, things are kind of quiet, people kind of slow down and take breaks. It is a thing, not everyone, but for the most part. The beautiful Kentucky rolling hills. I mean, everywhere you go, you're going to see cows and chickens and horses and that beautiful, you know, black wood Kentucky fencing. That's a real thing here. Crickets and frogs and lightning bugs on a quiet summer night. Like those are real things that we experience every day. These are all the reasons why Jarrett and I personally didn't love about Idaho when we lived there for a year because Idaho doesn't have trees. And so if they don't have trees, like, I mean like trees in the suburbs, like a lot of trees. <laughs> I think that's why like in Montana, it's called Big Sky Montana because Kentucky is covered in trees and where in Montana and Idaho, it's just nothing but land and sky forever. But without the trees, you lose the sound of birds, the sound of tree frogs, the sound of crickets at night. And those are things we really missed while we were away and we really wanted them back in our lives. That's a big reason we came back. So yes, do we have a homeless population and crime and political tension? Yes, lots of political opinions everywhere, but doesn't sound like anything like y'all are talking about out there. Who doesn't have political opinions anymore? Maybe except me, because y'all wore me out like i just don't care anymore <laughs> that's the truth it's just more than i can stand anymore so let's not talk about it let's talk about horses and farmland so we've recently closed a lot of deals a lot of transactions with buyers just like yourself who've reached out to us from this channel and they have taken the leap of faith you know and moved across country to try out what kentucky's like recently i'll just name five to seven buyers we've worked with and where they came from and where they purchased. This is really interesting because again, like this is what we do. And, and, and I just, I absolutely love it because behind every one of these families is a story and they're all different and it, it's just amazing. So the, this literally is the highlight of our jobs, Los Angeles, California to Oakland, Kentucky. That one was a little more specific as far as city because we don't normally get people from LA specifically, but in this case we did. And I will tell you that they've been here a couple months. I wanna say about six, seven months now. And the feedback we're getting is they love it. Bought three acres way out in the country, you know, coming from a tight area in LA to having some space and some freedom. Um, we've got nothing but good feedback from this family. 
So far, they love it. California to Glasgow, Kentucky. Arizona to Alvaton, Kentucky, which is just east of Bowling Green. Texas to Bowling Green. California to Cave City. Alabama to Bowling Green. Tennessee to Bowling Green. Yep, matter of fact, Tennessee people, they sometimes come a little bit north too because, well, it's cheaper here. Those are just some ones we've closed recently. We currently have several under contract with similar stories coming from all kinds of places too. California, Minnesota, Arizona, just to name a few. People do leave the big cities to come down to the quieter areas. So some of you on the other side of this screen might be asking, well, don't people usually choose Tennessee over Kentucky because there's no state income tax? Well, and maybe because Tennessee seems cheaper. Well, is it? You guys might wanna check out one of Jarrett's videos he did where he compared two houses, one in Kentucky, one in Tennessee. And I know it's not all about like housing market and home prices because clearly Tennessee is higher than Kentucky, but there's a little more that goes into it that might surprise you on why Tennessee may actually not be cheaper for you. So check that video out. Look, you get one life and in today's world, it's constantly changing. And you only regret the chances you didn't take. Relocating can seem daunting, like eating an elephant, right? One bite at a time. It's one stair step at a time. And we get this question all the time too when you guys call us and it's, but Val, how can you help us with relocation? And so with that, I say, I am so excited to tell you guys that we're coming up with a really awesome project soon. It's gonna answer all your questions about where to even begin and all the steps in between, even dealing with some of the emotional side of the transition. So stay tuned and subscribe, because listen, we're here to help. Because if you're looking in Tennessee also, because a lot of people do this, they'll consider Southern Kentucky or Northern Tennessee, we actually have agent partners that can help you as well, who are licensed in Tennessee. So don't hesitate to reach out. And I'm saying that in a truthful way and saying that don't be fearful that we're just gonna pass you off to some agent we don't even know. That's not how Jarrett and I operate, okay? These are people we, we know, like, and trust as well and we're not gonna steer you wrong because this is a huge undertaking for you all and you want to work with someone you know you can relate to and you can trust. So there are some other you know, YouTube agents who work for bigger name brokerages who might just pass you off to whoever within their brokerage in whatever state, just because they simply have a, a large database full of agents in many different states and they can easily get a referral fee out of that. So while that's not wrong, I guess what I'm saying is maybe be careful of some agents on YouTube who are very quick to just say, hey, you need an agent in Alabama? I got one. You need an agent in California? I got one. Just contact me. I'll send them to you or I'll send you to them. And that may not be the best scenario for you who's trying to uproot your whole life and put your trust into the hands of someone who's just going to pass you off just for a referral fee. I just need you to know that that's not how Jarrett and I operate. And we are very, very selective on if we are going to refer you to a different agent. Typically it's someone we're going to keep in house inside our brokerage and someone we actually know personally and know how they work and operate with their own clients, how much business they do or don't do and how they interact with the people they work with. And are they a good fit for you? Who's moving from California, to the other side of the United States. There's a lot that goes into this and we're gonna cover some of this later, especially in our upcoming project that we have for you all. So please subscribe. You shouldn't be disappointed. <laughs> I don't like to make false promises. So, hey, if you're learning anything about us, it's, you know, we try to be as real as possible and not over exaggerate or over deliver because again, this is about trust. So in this project we're working on, I do break down a piece where I explain how not all agents are created equal and not all YouTube agents are created equal. Well, why Val? Why? What does that mean exactly? Well, let me give you a couple examples and I'll explain. The number one reason why agents in general aren't created equal is, well, we all have different niches. Okay. So while maybe Jarrett and I, our niche is relocation. Another agent's niche might be working in new construction and they've 
created a network of builders they work with and they're very localized and they specialize in the new construction and the new builds, okay? Another agent might specialize in probate cases or divorce cases. Another agent might just be, you know, wanting to market themselves to the local area to be a listing heavy agent. And they just want to carry a bunch of listings and that's it. They don't really work with a lot of buyers. Of course, while some agents do both, we work with buyers and sellers, you know, you should probably always ask the person you're talking to, like, what is your specialty? What do you specialize in? Because real estate can be so broad. It can be so much that you, you kind of do have to pick an area that you focus on where you know you're gonna be of like full service to the client and be able to help them through their entire transaction. Okay, let me use another example. Commercial, commercial real estate. I, we don't mess with commercial real estate. It's just not my niche. Another example of how agents may not be created equal is how they market themselves and how they run their business, okay? A, a good example of, of this is truthfully, sometimes agents who market themselves on Zillow. Now, that's a lot of agents, so I'm not talking about everyone, but there are specific cases where, for example, agents can maybe market certain new construction house plans on Zillow and fall and go under a name of a construction company when they're not actually a construction company. They have a team of agents and they can operate under a company's name that seems to be a construction company's name and you know post all these listings on Zillow or house plans on Zillow for an upcoming new development but when you call and click inquiring thinking you're going to reach out to a builder you're actually not reaching out to a builder you're reaching out to a team of agents who honestly just want the phone call so this whole part of this video isn't really about agents we're sticking to the topic here of reasons why people are coming from California to Kentucky. But the reason this is important is because you're so far away and you're not here. You're doing your research online, trying to find someone to talk to, to help you through this process. And so these things are important guys. And I'm sharing this with you in all honesty that Jarrett and I get these calls from you guys. And so when we're on the phone, we, we're talking about, you know, we've set up our initial call. We're talking about your goals and your timeline and what you're looking for. These are the properties that sometimes, sometimes you all mention. So, hey, I found this house plan. What about this house plan? And you start asking questions. And so while we try to answer your questions, the truth behind what you found on sites like Zillow isn't exactly Number one, what can be done? Sometimes that house plan can't even be built in that subdivision, but you wouldn't know that yet until you made the phone call. And so there's all this stuff that goes behind it that I don't wanna say isn't truthful because sometimes it can be, but honestly guys, it's just marketing. It's just to get the phone call. The feedback we get from you all is it's misleading. I personally don't like that scenario. And when we get calls from people like yourselves who are just trying to take the next step in their lives and, and you've got to trust people in the next state because you're not here yet. Yeah, it seems misleading. Don't you wanna be knowing that you're calling an agent? If it, if it says it's an agent, it should be an agent. If it says it's a builder, it should be a builder. So the third aspect of how agents may not be created equal is when I said YouTube agents may not be created equal. Okay, we're in a point now where since 2020, a lot of agents have taken to YouTube for their marketing, which is good and fine and great. Like this is a ton of good, valuable content for you out there who needs to know more about the towns you're moving to. This is fantastic. Real estate agents should be doing this. However, I think at this point, Jarrett and I have been doing it for a good four years now. I hope you think we're getting better at it, by the way. <laughs> but I know we're not big Hollywood producers by any stretch, but we're trying. Some agents are taking to it just for the marketing aspect, okay? So they're following along with the trends of pros and cons, cost of living, talking about their town a little bit, only to get going on YouTube a couple videos in and realize how big of a commitment YouTube actually is. It is a ton of work. And so a lot of agents bow out very quickly because this type of marketing 
has to be like what your niche is. So if their niche isn't relocation, you know, maybe they're listing heavy, maybe they want to work with builders instead. They get frustrated with this kind of marketing because this isn't really what they want to do. And this isn't really their target client that they want to work with. And so you might stumble across a channel that maybe looks like it's doing real well, but guess what? This agent doesn't really know how to work with a relocator. I guess what I'm saying is you guys have to be responsible and do your due diligence enough to at least make the call and ask that agent, you know, is relocation your niche? Is this what you do with most of your clients? Um, do you know, do you work with video a lot? Do you know how to thoroughly video a, a home and, and send it to me and across the globe and, and work with me through a 60 day transaction? you know, on a 10 hour time zone difference. Like there's a lot that goes behind that. And a lot of agents don't really do that through their business every day. So it's okay to ask, like, listen, you're uprooting your life for this. So make sure you're asking the right questions and definitely just honestly choose someone you feel like you can trust and you can relate to. Believe me, we have been there and we ourselves when we're moving out of state and we've done this before, we choose agents we know we can trust, we can relate to, and that fit our need according to what we need to do inside that real estate transaction. Does that make sense? I hope so. That's it. At the end of the day, people just want to know that they can trust you. You guys are making a huge life decision. We are with you. We feel you. We get it. We're excited for you. And if this is something you're looking to do, our information's in the link below reach out. We're not afraid to answer your questions. We'd love to talk to you. We work with people like you all the time and we actually love it. Subscribe and stay tuned. We'll be in touch. See you next week.